The celebration of Grendel's death and the Danes' liberty begins immediately. The Danes race their horses with boyish exuberance, and the Shope begins singing a new song to tell of Beowulf's deeds. A clear example of the interlaced technique, the Shope's song weaves together the threads of Beowulf's story with two other stories from the bard's tale hoard, resulting in a new word-crafting tapestry. The man started to recite with skill, rehearsing Beowulf's triumphs and feats in well-fashioned lines, entwining his words, the poet tells us in line 870. The first story thread is of Sigmund, a good king who killed the dragon and brought its treasure home to his people. The bard uses this tale to amplify the glory of Beowulf's fight with Grendel by equating Beowulf with Sigmund. He was utterly valiant and venturesome, a fence round his fighters and flourished therefore. The second story is of Heramod, a selfish, vicious king whose greed and grief came to an inglorious end, as we'll see later. The well-known story of Heramod reminds us that there are monsters inside the community as well as outside, like Unferth. The Shope contrasts Heramod's selfishness with Beowulf's generous and courteous victory risking life and limb for a people not his own. The Shope says, Such was Beowulf, in the affection of his friends and of everyone alive, but evil entered into Heramod. Hrothgar congratulates Beowulf as well, and adopts him as his foster son. Whoever she was, the king says, who brought forth this flower of manhood, if she is still alive, that woman can say that in her labor the Lord of Ages bestowed a grace on her, so now, Beowulf, I adopt you in my heart as a dear son. Beowulf responds with a speech drunk with enthusiasm. If you could have seen the monster where he lay beaten, I would have been better pleased. Beowulf continues his, ah, you should have seen it speech with a play-by-play -play retelling of the fight. When with Grendel dead, Heorot can be remade. Hrothgar orders it refurbished and prepared for a celebration feast. The poet specifically mentions the tapestries on the walls. Gold threads shone in the wall hangings, woven scenes that attracted and held the eye's attention. The winter of Grendel's discontent is over. Spring has come at last. Hrothgar then opens his treasure hoard and lavishes great gifts on Beowulf and his men. They are so opulent that the poet remarks, There haven't been many moments, I am sure, when men exchanged four such treasures at so friendly a sitting. Hrothgar also rewards Beowulf's men for their bravery. He even pays the Yates a ware guild, the blood price, for the Yatish warrior Grendel killed in the fight. Truly this was a good king, eager to cultivate peace among his people and their allies. Then the bard sings again, this time a story of Finn and his sons, a story of treachery, vengeance, and brutal war. We'll talk about the specifics of this famous story in the next video, but once again, the Shope uses this story to praise Beowulf by contrast. He is a foreigner who delivers on other people rather than stirring up war among them. The greed and selfishness of the Finsburg episode also contrasts with the generosity of the gifts that Hrothgar gives to his foreign guests. After the song, Huyel Thiao enters and mentions that she has heard how Hrothgar adopted Beowulf as his guest son. Then she does something rather odd. She urges Hrothgar, in front of all the Danes and the Yates, to bequeath kingdom and nation to your kith and kin before your decease. Huelthel begins to talk about how Hrothulf will treat her sons, or how he should treat her sons, after Hrothgar's death. She declares before everyone listening that she expects Hrothulf will repay the, the kindness his uncle has shown him. She says, I am certain that I am certain of Hrothulf. He is noble and will use the young ones well. Should you die before him, he will treat our children truly and fairly. He will honor, I am sure, our two sons, repay them in kind when he recollects all the good things we gave him once, the favor and respect he found in his childhood. After this seemingly off-topic speech, Huel Thiel lavishes Beowulf with more opulent gifts and petitions him to be a good counselor and protector of her sons. Be acclaimed for strength, for kindly guidance of these two boys, and your bounty will be sure. Treat my sons with tender care, be strong and kind. She concludes by declaring that all the Danish nobles are true to their king. 
In this episode, we see three techniques that Huel Thiao uses to help maintain and deepen the bonds of peace in the Danish kingdom and the Danish community. First, she passes the mead cup to each warrior in order of the standing of the social standing in the community. This visibly demonstrates the social hierarchy and reminds everyone present of their responsibilities and loyalties to the in the community. Second, Huel Thiao gives speeches stressing that the strength and joy of the community depends depend on each warrior fulfilling his duty to his king and nation. Third, Huel Thiao symbolizes peace in her very being and presence. The poet utilizes this symbolism by having her appear after major conflicts. After Beowulf defeats Unferth with his word hoard, we see Huel Thiao, Huel Thiao for the first time. And here we see her again celebrating Grendel's defeat. So what's going on here with these seemingly off-topic speeches? What is Huel Thiao doing? This poem is given a few hints that Heorot is going to burn down as a result of civil war. Apparently, Huel Thiao has already seen signs of ambition in her nephew, and so she uses her position as peace weaver to give a speech in front of the entire community to secure protection for her son's lives and inheritance. By speaking publicly of Hrothulf's obligation to show gratitude, she creates a public check on his ambition. What's more, by speaking to Beowulf in the way she does, she enlists Beowulf's protection for her sons, who, the poet tells us, are sitting on either side of Beowulf. A very cunning woman, Huel Thiao binds Hrothulf's ambition with the dual cords of shame and fear. Huel Thiao uses nothing but words and word crafting to protect the Danish people from the serpent that creeps among them, the monster that lurks in their midst. But ultimately, Huel Thiao fails, and Heorot burns, as the poet has already told us. The poet also mentions that Heolak, Beowulf's king, will die wearing the gold torque Huel Thiao gave, gave him. The mention of Hrothulf's coming treachery and of Heolak's death introduces a new thread in the interlace structure, a thread begun by the Shope's song of the Frisian slaughter, the sense of impending doom and the futility of human action. Though Beowulf has just slain Grendel, there are other threats to both the Danes and the Yates that Beowulf might be powerless to stop. This foreboding thread prepares us for what happens next, for Huel Thiao isn't the only mother in this story.